I'm making more molds of 3D printed dice. I have a new design that I want to do just real quick for this video, and I'm going to do it the recommended way this time to try and prevent cure inhibition. You know, when you pop open a mold and it's nothing but goop inside because it hasn't cured because of the chemical reaction that it has with your resin. I've tried different resins and I've had success with some and not success with others. Usually the standard resins like Nova 3D Standard works just fine for me. You will also need to use a platinum cure silicone, not a tin cure. If it doesn't say, get one that says it's specifically platinum cure. I like the Smooth On series. There's the Mold Star, Sorta Clear, and my favorite, the Dragon Skin. You can use whatever you have available or that you like the best. Also from Smooth On is Inhibit X, which is what I will be trying to prevent cure inhibition, inhibition, inhibition. And then I will be using some Ease Release 200 Mold Release, which you're supposed to use one coat of after using two coats of the Inhibit X. But first I'm going to get my dice all mounted on my two part mold cups so that I have something to hold on to and more easily apply these products that I have now. These dice I have sanded and made them as perfect as I could get them with glass like surfaces. I would recommend not doing that. Just do a rough sand and then do this because with all the other additives that you're putting on there and the ease release it's not going to have that glass like surface anymore. Whatever mold you're going to make, you should use those to create your masters. Sand those and then create molds of your more perfect masters of the normal resin. As always, I'll let you judge for yourself what works best, but I would say that if you're just going to make one dice or one set of dice, this may not be worth it for you. The Inhibit X that I got is about $65 and the ease release was about $22. So it's quite a bit of money to just make one set. If you're gonna be making multiple sets, no problem, definitely worth it. So I shake up my Inhibit X and I get it ready to apply. The directions say to use a brush, so that's what I'm going to do, even though it would make more sense to me to just dip it in the liquid. But all you have to do is make sure that it gets all over in the numbers and has a good thin little layer, I guess. It's, it's liquid, it's basically like water. So just get it all wet and it's supposed to dry. So I'll go ahead and do that to all of my dice. My jumbo fell off so I had to glue it back on later, but even after letting it sit for about two hours, it still isn't dry. There's still a wet film on it, and in some places it's got kind of a brown tint to it, and I've noticed also in little pieces in the number, it has kind of started to turn white, kind of like the corners of the five in there. Maybe it's an inhibition, inhibition, inhibition? I don't know. But I'll just go ahead and apply a second layer, but you can still see that there's a little bit of the wet film on there. And just to make sure that it just doesn't look like it's wet, I actually wipe it with my finger and it does smear. So there is still a layer on there. So let's put on another one. There are a little bit of floaties, so just filter that when you pour it back into the bottle. I then let it dry, and this time I let it dry overnight, and it's still got that wet film on it. So what else can you do than just gently rub it off? I mean, it still has that coating on there, but you don't want it to be wet when you put your ease release on. So we'll shake up our ease release now that they're somewhat dry, 
and we'll just spray that on evenly as we can on all of the surfaces. And this one also says to use a brush to apply, which is weird because it's a spray, but we're gonna do it anyway the way that they say to do it. And also it helps to get, at least the way that I have them, the underside of the die. Once I have a good coating of ease release, I will let it dry for about 5 minutes and then I'm going to use my Mold Star 30 for my main dice. And this has been sitting for a while, so hopefully it still works. It's not supposed to be that globby. But this has a longer work time, so I will do it first and then do the Dragon Skin 10, which has a shorter work time. And that should even out before I put them into the pressure pot. I like to pour slowly off to the side and let it just fill up underneath until it's completely covered. While that's happening, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, yes you, patrons, warriors, heroes, those who support this channel. If you too would like to be as awesome as these listed individuals, you can go to patreon.com forward slash geek happens and sign up for a tier. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you also feel so inclined, you could go to my web store at 3dmtabletop.com and pick up some dice of your own, or have me custom make you some, or get some miniatures, you know, just whatever makes your game better. Now this Dragon Skin 10 that I am using is a brand new set, so it should work well at least for the jumbo. And I'm going to use about 60 milliliters. My guess is that's going to be pretty close. Always mix your part A and part B really well, probably about five minutes of stirring just to make sure that it's mixed. Make sure you scrape the edges and the sides of the cup and then make sure you get it poured as soon as you can before your work time expires because it starts to get really thick and does not pour. Once the silicone is poured, I will put it in the pressure pot until it is done curing. And then once it's cured, we'll go ahead and remove them from the containers. You can pop the bottom off and then you can use a toothpick to kind of roll around the edges to separate it. Or if you're lazy and you're just going to print new ones anyway, you can cut it with some cutters. Once it's out, you're going to go ahead and separate it and kind of work it away from the edges of the dice. This mold star is a lot thicker so I'm going to cut halfway down the side as well just so that it's easier to get out because this will not stretch as much as the dragon skin it will just start to rip it's not as flexible but it is fairly easy to get your slimy die out and now your original is got that slime on it so if if you want to use it again, you'll have to scrub and wash off the ease release and start that process over again. But the molds look great. First try. And I was worried that that silicone wouldn't work well because it had been sitting for months without being used. After being used once before. Unfortunately, however, on the jumbo, there is not enough mold release because this is impossible to get off. It is super stuck on there. Even after cutting down the sides more so that I can get to it, the only option I have is to hulk it out. And that's what I do. I do finally eventually get it to come out, but it does have pieces of silicone stuck in the numbers that I later have to remove with a toothpick and then I have to clean it up again and do it all over again, but this time I'm going to use two coats of Ease Release just for good measure. It seems like if you have to use two coats of Inhibit-X, you should probably use two coats of Ease Release just to make sure that you have a good coat of each. I may have forgot to mention before, but 60 milliliters wasn't enough. I ended up having to do about 80 to get it completely full for the jumbo. And the second time is a charm. 
it comes off just like it should really easily. So I just work my way around the edges to get it released and then I can just pop it out. And the mold looks good, so let's go ahead and put some resin in there. Whenever doing masters, I like to do a translucent color. That way when it's cured, one, it's easy to see to cut it out, and two, it still has that glass-like look so that when you're sanding it, it's easier to get it exactly how you want it. After letting the bubbles surface and pop for a while, I'll go ahead and fill. Yes, there's still a lot of bubbles in it, but I'm just going to put it in a pressure pot. So I'm going to pour them all in, let them sit for a little bit, and then top them off with a pipette and make sure that all the air bubbles I can get out are out and then leave some excess in the reservoir for it to have somewhere to fill in when it's in the pressure pot. And of course, if you do get holes in your dice, which will happen sometimes, I do have another video that shows you how to easily fix those. And I know that these are going to have to be sanded and have a lot of work done anyway, so I'm not too worried if I do get bubbles. Once it's cured, I'll go ahead and take those new master dice out. And as expected, they do have that kind of a liquidy, oily look to them from coating them in Inhibit X and with the ease release. So you'll definitely have to do a lot of sanding on all of the faces, all of the edges, get that to be see-through, glass-like, perfect, and then go ahead and make molds of those, and you won't have to use anything but your platinum silicone, and it should work excellently. I hope this video has been helpful to you in helping you decide whether or not you should spend the funds to use Inhibit X or Ease Release to make sure that your 3D printed parts are molded properly. It does work well, but perhaps for you it might be better if you just printed a die in different types of resin, made a small thing of silicone in the bottom of a container and put your dice in there and see which ones actually will react and which ones will or will not be inhibited with their cure and just use the one that works best. That would probably only cost a few dollars as opposed to close to $100. Whatever makes your life easier, go ahead and do that. If you like this video, express it by clicking the thumbs up and also subscribing so that you can see future videos. Maybe comment on something you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, go make some really cool custom molds. Mm -hmm.